Hey, good evening. Welcome to Home Group. We are so glad that you are here with us tonight. And uh, what a great message this morning from Pastor Bills. The, 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 the verse that we used this morning was this. It's Exodus 20:14. You shall not commit adultery. And uh, as Pastor Bill shared with us this morning, we're talking and we talk today about being heroically faithful. I, I would like for uh, to lead us into a discussion tonight talking about this very topic of faithfulness, especially in the light of relationships and marriage. Um, the Ten Commandments are broken into two sections. The first five deal with our relationship with God. The second five deal with our relationship with one another. And we can really understand those, those commandments even more so when we look at the words of Jesus. Um, when he was asked, what is the most important commandment? And here was the answer that Jesus gave in Matthew 22, 27 through 40. Jesus said this, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Second, a second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. You see, how we relate to each other is as equally as important as how we relate to God. And there's no relationship as, a, as important as the bond between a husband and a wife and in our marriage. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, he uses this marriage as a metaphor or as a symbol, if you would, of, of God and Jesus' relationship to the church. And, and he says, he even kind of relates it to the place that we can see God in his Trinitarian way as three in one. We can see him in our marriage. Here's what Paul says about that. A man is to leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. He also says, husbands, you ought to love your wives as your own bodies. Our marriages are intended to reflect God to the world around us. And this explains to us really why marriage is under such attack. Everywhere we look, people are uh, the, the world is coming against marriage as God has defined it, marriage as God has laid it out for us, and marriage in this day and age is a very difficult thing. And so as we stop and we look, we understand that from the very beginning of time, in the garden, Satan has done everything that he could, and he is doing everything that he can to stop this thing called marriage. We see in the garden that Satan uh, looked to divide Adam and Eve, the first husband and wife. He did everything he could to get them to blame each other, and even to get them to blame God. What an incredible concept. They were not willing to take personal responsibility, and they failed in that state even because they weren't willing to fight together against the attack of the enemy in their own lives. So God, in his top 10 list, says that faithfulness to marriage needs to be a priority in our lives. So if you're married tonight, I want you to listen to me for a minute. If you're not married tonight, I want you to listen to what I'm about to say. If you know someone who is married and you want to maybe be a, a source of help to them, listen to what I'm about to say. As a matter of fact, everyone at this point should be listening to what I'm about to say. I want you to understand this. And sometimes we sit back and we say, well, why, why is this marriage thing so hard? Here's why. Number one, marriage is hard because it's under attack. Because Satan, our enemy, is looking to do everything he can to destroy marriage. Scripture says that God hates divorce. And if God hates it, that's pretty much a shoe in that the devil loves it. And so Satan is doing everything he can to attack us. So, so marriage is a spiritual institution that needs to be protected spiritually. A second thing I want you to know tonight is that marriage is hard work because none of us married perfect people. No one married a perfect person. Man, we, we do everything we can at weddings to make them look 
awesome. I mean, we put everybody, we get them dressed up, we bring them in. But I want you to think of marriage, and I think this is, as you think about it, this is a more of a reflection of what marriage and a wedding ceremony really is. Imagine a husband and wife walking up to the, to the altar at the wedding. Each of them has a garbage bag, and in that garbage bag is all the stuff of their life. How many of you know that we all come, to, we all come into our marriage with baggage? We all have trash. And each of them has a garbage bag. And what they think is happening is that as they stand before the pastor, that the pastor is going to give them a blessing. And somehow he's going to take those garbage bags. And as they walk away from the altar, they're going to walk away with no garbage bags. But let me tell you what really happens, because I'm a pastor and I know I'm a trained professional. That What happens is, is at that altar, the pastor has his own garbage bag and he brings it out. And this one's empty. And he opens it up and he says to you, do you, uh, Janice, take Ryan to be your husband? And she says, yes. And so she empties her garbage bag into that one garbage bag. And then he turns to the, to the guy like me and he says, will you, Ryan, take Janice to be your wife? And I say yes, and I empty my garbage bag into that garbage bag. And then that pastor takes that garbage bag and he mixes all the garbage together. And he says, now by the power vested in me by the state of California and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he gives us back the garbage bag. And we walk down now, and our garbage is all mixed together. Now, I want you to know that um, it's one thing to go through my own garbage. It's another thing to go through somebody else's. Marriage is hard because we're all combined, all of our garbage into that one. And the task of our marriage is to work through our issues together. Before we ever are united, we work through the issues in that garbage bag together. So marriage is hard work because none of us married perfect people. The vow to stay faithful to your marriage, listen, is essential for your marriage to thrive. This commandment that we give, do not commit adultery, is not intended for us in the best times of our marriage, but it's for us in the hard times of our marriage. Let's get honest. Sometimes we look at other people and we think, wow, if I had a marriage like theirs, I would never be tempted to commit adultery. But you don't know what's happening in their marriage. We all our image managers. But the reality is, is that each of us go through hard times in our marriage relationships. And as we do, that's when we come under attack and that's when we are most tempted. Satan will always tempt you at the hardest and the weakest point. That's why he waited 40 days after Jesus had been praying and fasting. He waited till Jesus was physically weak before he tempted him. And so these vows that we make to each other as we get married, they're so very important. My vows went like this. I, Ryan, take you, Janice, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, until death parts us. Now that sounds so poetic, but man, that is some serious vow right there. Whether we have money or none, for better when life is going great or when life gets really hard, when health is fantastic or when we're sick and we're going through the hardest times of our lives, no matter what happens, I will be there. That's what those vows mean. And God says to you and to I, when you make a vow, keep it. Keep it. Because that's the way relationships work best. Don't just keep it when it's good. Keep it when it's hard. Keep it when you don't feel like it. Live by the vow that you have made. So I, I'm basically saying to us, isn't it awesome? Isn't it awesome to have someone in this world who's made a commitment to you, if you're married, that has said, no matter what happens, no matter what happens, you can count on me. No matter how hard it gets, I'll be there for you. That's going to make marriage a little bit hard. Because let me just tell you, sometimes life gets hard. Sometimes things look like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But that's where we come to that place where we stop and we 
understand that this is not a vow that God's asking us to keep on our own. It's a vow that God says, I will come alongside of you. I will help you. I will sustain you in the difficult times. I would like to, to give some advice. Perhaps as you're listening to this today, you're sitting back and you're saying, well, Pastor Ryan, life's hard. And this is a hard commandment. All around us today, people are being unfaithful in their marriages. And there's temptation all around you. What do we need to do if we're saying our marriage is in trouble? Well, I, I would just suggest this to you. If you're facing hard times in your marriage, I suggest you do the following. Number one, you need to lean into God. You need to lean into the Lord and you need to ask for help. James chapter 1 is very clear. If anyone needs wisdom, let him ask of God who, give freely, who gives freely of all men. Number two, I would encourage you to remember this, that your spouse is not your enemy. One of, this, one of Satan's greatest lies is, to, is that your spouse is against you. Listen, none of you got married to each other because you said, hey, I hate you and you hate me. Hey, that's perfect. Let's get married. <laughs> that's just not the way it works. You're married because you were attracted to each other, because you love each other. And Satan is a master of turning that upside down. Remember, your spouse is not your enemy. They're your partner in life. They're who you're to do life with. The next thing I would suggest is if you're at a place, you're at an impasse where you're just not able to come to any conclusion, you're not able to work out your issues, seek outside help. You do not need to try to do this thing called marriage all on your own. There's no shame in getting wise counsel. We all have areas where we need help. Where do I get help? Well, start by looking around. Maybe there's a couple that you admire and you look at their marriage and you say, that's how I would like to be. Ask them to be a mentor couple for you. Ask them to tell you how they work out issues and what they're doing. Maybe even look around the room now in your home group, and there might be someone right there sitting next to you that would love to help you, but all you need to do is ask. Jesus said, you have not, because you ask not. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. Man, sometimes you just need to ask some people, hey, would you help us? Hey, this is a problem we're going through. How, did, how would you deal with that kind of a problem? Perhaps there's no one there like that for you, or maybe you've tried that and it's not working. Well, then I would suggest that you go to one of the pastors in our church and get some biblical counsel on ways that you can help. Many of us are trained in how to give counseling to people that are married or in marriage crisis. We're not therapists by any stretch of the imagination, but we've, we've been through life enough, and most of us are married, and we can help you. And if you'll come and ask, we'll gladly do all that we can to assist you in that. And maybe you need to go to a marriage counselor, to a therapist. And I would just tell you that's a great way. My wife and I have gone to counseling and to a therapist throughout our whole marriage. We have found it to be a very beneficial tool in a healthy marriage for us. And I would tell you to go for it. Some people say, well, why would I go to outside help? Well, the same reason you go to a mechanic to get your car fixed. Because there are just some things that are beyond your level of expertise. It's the same reason you go to uh, a counselor for your finances and for investments. Because there are some things that are beyond your level of expertise. It's the same reason you go to a doctor when you're sick or get a trainer when you're working out. Because sometimes you need somebody to help you and to show you the way. Hey, if we would seek help for all those other areas of our lives, why wouldn't we seek help? in this most important relationship outside of our relationship with God in this world. And I would advise you this. If you're single today and you say, well, Ryan, what do I do to make sure that I don't commit adultery? Well, I would say start living in sexual purity right now. Make it, make it a point in your life to say, hey, one of my life values is not to have sexual relationships with people I'm not married to. And let me just tell you this. If you can do that now while you're single, it will become even easier. It will make it easier for you to do that when you're married. And I would say to people, hey, if you're involved in a relationship with someone and you're not married to them and you're having sexual relationship with them, you need to be aware of this if you want to marry them. They're willing to have sex with someone they're not married with. And if they'll do that with you before you get married, 
Well, they'll probably be willing to do that with someone else after you get married because that's a value that they don't hold in high esteem. Wow, that's a thought, not only for those who are married, but for those who are single. Be very careful. Our sexuality is a precious gift from God. And just like our money, it needs to be managed well. We are stewards of our sexuality. And I encourage you tonight to reflect on this commandment where God says the marriage relationship is so important you shouldn't be committing adultery. It's about sexual purity. It's about meeting each other's needs, but it's about so much more. It's about living in faithfulness one to another. God bless you as you go to your discussion tonight.